In this video, we're going to take you through the caching feature in WordFence Security. You can see here I'm looking at the performance area or the caching area, if you will. And there's not too much to go through here, but hopefully by going through this, you can add a decent speed improvement on your website. The very first thing you can do here is enable caching. And there's two kinds you can turn on. There is basic caching and the proprietary WordFence Falcon engine. With basic caching, you should see a two to three times speed increase, as is noted here. For most websites, that is really quite a massive increase. And at the minimum, we would recommend turning on this particular type of caching. There is, of course, the Falcon engine that we just mentioned. This uses a different kind of caching than is normally used by making certain modifications to the HT access file. It's hard to say 100% definitively if the Falcon engine will be for you, but Usually anything that makes your website faster is a very good thing. So we're going to go ahead and turn that one on. Once you've turned that on and then you hit save changes, you'll get a small message saying that it wants to make a backup of your HD access file, which is a very, very wise thing to do. So what you need to do now is just click there to create a backup of your HD access file so that you can re-upload this to your server if there's any problems. And once that's done, you need to click enable Falcon cache you'll get a message saying that it's been activated and to refresh the page. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. And in doing so, we've saved that change. So what we then go down to are the cache options. The first is to allow SSL pages to be cached. As it says, it's recommended that this is left disabled unless your site uses HTTPS but doesn't send and receive uh, sensitive user information. It's a pretty niche scenario for websites. So most people probably won't be using this and we're just gonna leave it as is, we're gonna leave it off. The next setting is to add debugging data to the bottom of HTML cached pages. So what this means is that if you were to look at the source code of a particular page, you'll get a small message in the HTML as a comment down the bottom. I am going to turn this on because I find it to be particularly useful, especially if you need to do a little debugging and see what's up with your cache and if there's any problems and so on and so forth. The next option is to clear the cache when a scheduled post is published. This can be a very good feature to turn on because otherwise you may be serving a cached copy uh, of your website and then users won't be actually seeing that new post on your homepage, for instance. So I'm gonna turn that on and then hit save changes. And those changes have been done. Then you get down to cache management. As it notes, anytime an administrator makes a site change, the cache is cleared. And there's a list of what changes will actually result in that cache being cleared down here, such as publishing a post, creating a page, and so on. If at any time you need to clear the cache manually, you can come into this page and click on clear the cache. After this, we get down to the cache exclusions. So what you can do here is prohibit certain pages and cookies and uh, browsers and so on from using uh, the cache. So as you can see here, there's a great number of options you can choose from. So if the URL exactly matches, so say for instance, you don't want your contact page to be cached, you can change that. So if the URL exactly matches and then put in the URL of that actual page, though you don't need to put in the actual full domain, just actually where that page lies, uh, then you can go in and hit exclusion. And you can see here that that's been added to the cache exclusions. So that's the end of this video. We've just covered the caching setup in WordFence Security. We strongly recommend caching. Anything that increases the speed of your website is generally a good thing. Uh, it'll definitely improve the experience of the end user. So if you have any questions about what we've covered in this video, please feel free to ask in the comments below.